And uh, made it to Game as high nine, as nine world in. number eight in singles zero, and zero. world number two in doubles in tennis. And he will be our first server. Over to Tyson McGuffin. Point. Too good. And that's that lethal forehand. Yeah, and right off the bat, Tyson goes for Sock's backhand. Sock runs around it. Did not goes see to the forehand cross. Some down. discussion whether it was in or out. Some discussion on court that McGuffin did call it zero, zero. out subtly. So he will take the side out. Side out. A ferocious return there by Sock. Zero, zero. Point. Wow. Beautiful finishing touch cross court from Sock. This is going to be a game of shot making. I mean, even Sock right there, he holds the forehand slightly, whips One, it cross zero. court, fooled McGuffin. Side out. One of the other things about Sock is, is it's pretty evident when you watch him how athletic he is. Zero There's not one. many balls he won't get to. Ooh. I think that ball was just a Point. touch back. Jack Sock didn't call it, though. So McGuffin cracks the scoreboard. One, one. Side out. Calls that one deep on McGuffin, who looks for clarity. Gosh, Michelle, we've had about four balls go centimeters out in a row. Good thanks to our referee crew for this one. One, one. Jim Price, Nancy Packerzina, and Vicky Ryan. Oh, that is a whip from Jack Suck. Two, one. Side out. One, two. Point. Beautiful run around forehand there by McGuffin. This is the first ever meeting between these two. We got the little run around two, two. inside out, gets sock out stretched. Side out. You know, what's interesting, Michelle, is, is both of these players are not players known for their backhand. So they're both going to have a similar strategy with each other, potentially return to their backhand, open up the court, as we saw Saki right there. Two, two. Ooh, inside in goes Sock. And to your point, it doesn't matter if you target the backhand. It doesn't matter if you know he's going forehand every time. It's still powerful enough to beat these guys with passing shots. Three, two. You can know an idea of what to do. You still got to go do it. McGuffin goes off speed that time to the forehand side of Sock. Jack Sock had quite the run Two, three. at the Masters in January over in Palm Springs. Made it all the way to the bronze medal Point. match. Took that one over Kwong Duong. Took a loss to Federico Staxrud. 3-3. Three, three. Side out. The ball's so deep there by Sock. McGuffin tried to suddenly short hop it. Couldn't quite get the control on the ball. Sends it long. 3-3. Three, three. Side out. Purple luck cord's not going the way of Jack Sock. Sock has a smile on his face. Says he's seen those net cords not go his way a couple <laughs> times. He's got Colin Schick on the sideline with him. Buddy from North Carolina got a good little training three, three. crew over there, and NC will be making a stop there in April. Ooh. Tyson McGuffin apologizes, but a nice finishing touch on the roll shot to finish. Both these guys like to engage with their opponents. Tyson probably more than anybody. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of North Carolina, they actually played that tournament Four, together three. last year in doubles. So there's some familiarity. 
Start out. And Tyson McGuffin, one of the most welcoming pros, especially with these newer names emerging. Often likes to take players under his wing, teach them a little bit. That's uh, true. Over in his compound in Idaho. Connor Three, Garnett, four. another good example of that. Trained with McGuffin a bit early on. Point. Deep on the return. Heavy ball from Jack Sock on the serve. That's something that four, four. we don't always translate on, on TV with how heavy these shots can be right on the return. It's true. I mean, these guys are crushing the ball right now. And speaking to your point earlier about McGuffin taking players under his wing, Connor Garnett one, Jame Vic another. Uh, I always wonder, does he regret those decisions? Because those guys are, are powerhouses now in the singles game. Point. See the return go short there, but there's no doubt he's he's one of the you know most likable guys with the fans, with other players. Five, four. But when he's out here, he's not liking Jack Sack right now. Oh, the athleticism on display at the kitchen for Jack Sock. Big wingspan. Hit <laughs> it better, says McGuffin. <laughs> Hit a better angle. <laughs> Man, that Point. serve. Huge. What's it's, so impressive about it? Well, it's you? huge. It's deep. It's landing about three to six inches you know, in front of the baseline. And there's so much top spin, so it's bouncing off. So if McGuffin's taking five, a short five. hop, he's got to really focus to control the return. Right out. So Jack Sock, relatively new on the pro side, very new. You mentioned the debut in North Carolina last season, but his first tournament as a full-time pro this year at the Masters made it all the way through to the semis five, against five. Federico Staxer, dropped that one, but took down Connor Garnett and Jay Devillier on his way there. Yes, yeah, we see just a huge return to McGuffin's backhand there, not allowing him to run around it. It's true. Um, I mean, Sock's impressive. He's athletic. He's got a huge forehand. Five, five. And the court's not that big. It's, it's smaller than tennis, so he can move around it. Pretty dang quick. Quite a luxury for him. Yeah, a few points ago, McGuffin made a, a movement. He wasn't loving his, his backhand cut. His returns are floating a little bit, giving Sock time Six not five. only to set up, but to also choose his spot. Point. Wow. Just lost it inside the corner. 7-5. Yeah. <laughs> and, and these, great overhead there by McGuffin. These points are set up, one on the serving side by the serve and on the returning side by the return. It changes the complexion of the point. It allowed McGuffin to take control of the point, get up to the kitchen, and ultimately, you know, get the overhead for the winner. Five, seven. Wow, beautiful Point. shot from McGuffin. Sock let it fly. Six, seven. Good luck getting that ball back from Jack Sock. This progression draw, the Carvana Mesa Arizona Cup. And this is the round of 16. Jack Sock will be in action in a couple of matches from now as well in mixed Seven, doubles, six. playing alongside Catherine Parento, a new partnership. Ironically played with McGuffin last year. Football. Drag your toe mm, right football. foot. Point. On uh, McGuffin. Tough foot fault there for McGuffin as he was in control of that point. Take a look, another look at it here. Ah, yeah, his right toe there, touched the line. 8-6. Point. 6-9. I think we've got a water bottle drop behind the Guffin right before the serve. Beautiful Point. play from Tyson McGuffin. Gets his way to the kitchen. Finishes with the punch volley. McGuffin turns at the crowd there. He wants, as we're going to see the replay right here, he wants the crowd on his side. Seven, He's going to use it to 
energize him late in this first game. Side out. Such a deep, again, penetrating return. The moment after McGuffin serves, he has to be physically and mentally prepared for how hard and deep the ball is coming back. Great return Nine there seven. by Sock. Oh my goodness, point. Jack Sock. Game point. That is too good and unbelievable. On the move, cross court winner. McGuffin had good positioning there, but that's just too good by Sock. Game point for Time Jack receiver, Sock. 10 7. Time in, 10 7. Game point continues for Jack Sock, who was laughing at McGuffin for calling the timeout point, on game, game point. 11. Missed return from McGuffin. And Jack Sock takes it 11 7 in game one. Not happy about the way game one ended. Game Little gamesmanship at the end. How about this match zero, update zero. over on women's singles? Leia Jansen taking down Paris John in two. Point. All right, let's see if McGuffin makes some adjustments as he was talking to Kyle McKenzie on the game switch. What adjustments do you think he should make? I'm One hoping zero. Kyle McKenzie has the answers to that. <laughs> You know, but in all seriousness, and you come back to this, you might have the right strategy, but the execution Zero might not one. just been as good. Mm -hmm. So it might even just be, let's come back to what we originally planned to. We'll see here. Woo. Just grab the sideline on that inside out forehand. So much topspin on a pedal that's not necessarily easy to generate that topspin. One, one. How does he do it? Side just out. back. Yeah, Sock does things with a paddle that, that you know, a lot of other players are, are just not able to do from his tennis background, his ability to whip the ball, but he absolutely generates uh, a crazy amount of spin. Oh, my. Inside out. Inside out three times in a row from the kitchen. So deceptive. One, one. An inside out touch. Side out. Easy put away for McGuffin. Gets the serve right back. Gonna stay alive in this progression draw. Round of 16. 1,500 points up for grabs. Here at the Carvana Mesa Arizona one, Cup. One. Fortunately. That cord for Sock brings a one point lead for McGuffin. 2 1. No. Ooh. Just missed it on the ATP gimme for Tyson McGuffin. The net court was about to help him, just outstretched, couldn't get the ball down. Just sends it long. One, two. Side out. This is the lower half of the draw. Winner of this one will take on Dylan Frazier. Or two, Case and Campbell. Just back right from out. McGuffin. Yeah, Casey Campbell beat Colin Chick yesterday in three. I think it was 12 10 in the third. I caught the end of that one. Mm -hmm. Out of Miami. A really, really one, good two. player. 43 seed. Gonna do the same against Dylan Frazier. Seated eighth in this tournament. And sign out at a beauty for Jack Sock. It's tough because if he has time and the ball floats, you really don't know where he's going inside out or down the line because he holds his forehand so well as he did just there. Two, two. Side out. Good approach there for McGuffin. It's one of the big differences you see in the women's game and the men's game. More of the men will consistently two, come two. up to the kitchen where more of the women tend to stay back near the baseline. Point. 
McGuffin back on top by one. The crowd loves it. Arizona Athletic Grounds, home to us this weekend. Three, two. Mm, cat and mouse jinking to the backhand side, both sides. Sox oh. sends it wide. One of our first cat and mouse points. We've seen some kind of cat and mouse, but that was probably Four, the most two. extensive one. And it still wasn't even that long. Oh, no. Oh. Filthy from Jack Sock at the kitchen. The backhand roll to the same spot. Opens him up. McGuffin's going to cover space. Just a backhand flick. Puts it behind him. 2-4. Right out. Ambitious ATP attempts. Serve back to McGuffin. Four, two. Point. Five, two. Side out. McGuffin has over 179 wins in his men's singles career. 2-5. Point. <laughs> that thing is a weapon from Jack Sock. McGuffin puts the thumbs up. Again, off the back foot, fading to his left. 3-5. Uh, an impossible shot for most. Oh, my. Not an angle on the court. Jack Sock can't hit. Sorcery on his side of the court. McGovern's staying true. He's coming to the kitchen still every single time. I think he's playing the odds. He likes that strategy. He's going to stay with it right now. Point. I mean, what do you do if you're Tyson McGuffin right now? Jack Sock. Hitting clean winners, ties it back up at five. And it's, that's what I was saying earlier. It's so hard to tell the way he hits his forehand. He doesn't give it away, whether he's going inside out five, five. or up the line. So it's making McGuffin guess, guess a little bit. Mm -hmm. Start out. Heavy put away from McGuffin. Sock almost getting there. Throws in the lob midway through. What do you think of that choice? Um, he can get to any ball, so if he throws up a lob and it's not the best lob, he can typically get to it. Misses that one a little bit wide, but oftentimes in a defensive position, it's not a bad idea to throw up a lob because the lob, you hit it high enough and you can get it deep enough into the court. It gives you time to get back into the center of the court and then get on balance and then potentially play out the point. He just left that one a little bit. A little bit short. Sock left his towel on the other side of the court and uh, McGuffin was handing it to him. Some applause from the crowd. Some gamesmanship. <laughs> five, five. Point. This return for Sock. And a one point lead for McGuffin looking to pull away and extend this to three. Six, five. Side oh, out. my. Inside in, down the line, and the deception continues on the forehand of Jack Sock. Five, six. Short serve, let's serve, reserve. Five, six. Point. 
Yeah, another inside in for him there by Sock. It's the location he's chosen to go on his last three balls. We'll see if he continues to go up that line or back to the position that was the target that was working earlier, which was the inside out. Doing a good job mixing it up. Point. Yeah, there it is again. Four times. Seven, six. Oh my Point. goodness, Jack Sock. Destructive firepower on the forehand. Jack Sock is only getting started. Scary words to hear. Oh my. McGuffin calls it wide by just a hair, and Jack Sock, I think, might challenge this one. No, not, not enough to overrule. Mmm. It's close. Let's play, yes. And to, to your point of running around the forehand, was coming all the way from across the court to hit that shot. Side out. Maybe one of the disadvantages of Six, that eight. big forehand. Or running around it. Point. Mm, tough one to give up. On the heels of a close call, one point game. McGuffin right back in it. Seven, eight. Jack Sock right battling, throttles it down the line, takes the serve back. Well, you just said it. If you run around the forehand, or run around the backhand to the forehand, then you give up a lot of core positioning. But if you're as fast as Jack Sock, it doesn't really matter. Eight, seven. Side out. He is targeting that forehand as McGuffin comes in. He's hit it there about nine times in a row. He likes that pattern. Seven, eight. Point. Eight, eight. <laughs> it's got to be out, says Jack Sock. It is indeed tie game, and Sock with a chance to pull ahead here. Eight, eight. Looking Time to take eight, down eight, another eight. top five opponent in his young pickleball career. Three points away. Mm, missed out. it. McGuffin with a chance to stay alive in this match. Eight, eight. Oh my. What a counterattack from Jack Sock and a good read. Yeah, that's what you mentioned earlier, Michelle. If you run around it, hit it up the line, you get court space. McGuffin not able to get back as Sock hits the cross court eight, winner eight. off the volley. Point. A whip of a finish for Jack Sock and a one-point lead. Two points away from taking the match. Again, beautiful cross-court winner towards McGuffin's forehand. Catches McGuffin committing in the opposite direction. Mm, another let cord not going in the direction of Jack Sock. Serve Sock. surrendered to McGuffin. He wants that one back. You can tell he's trying to change up the spots. He's going... And McGuffin's forehand Eight, primarily, but he's switching up enough just to get to his backhand. Let's see what he does here. Oh, what a point. Tyson McGuffin stays alive, hangs on to tie it at nine. Come on, Tyson. 
Multiple big forehands there by Sock. McGuffin stays strong at the kitchen line. Volley after volley until he's able to outlast Sock in this point as we see the ball go into the net. Great point. 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, lethal return, but McGuffin counters and gets game point, game point. on his side in game two. Right to the corner, too, for Jack Sock on that return. Great third from McGuffin. Looking to extend it to three. 10 9. Oh, no. Missed point. return. Game We'll conclude game two in favor of Tyson McGuffin, who roared his way back into this one. The crowd wants more pickleball, and so do we. This one's going the distance. The official ball of the PPA Tour. Love to know the X factors on both sides, Kyle. Point. Yeah, yeah, great, great shot there by Sock. The number one thing for McGuffin as he's continued to approach the kitchen and he got caught guessing a lot is his approach shots. He needs to hit more penetrating shots and able to one get zero. Sock off balance so he can take control of the kitchen. He's done that multiple times in game two. He's going to need to do it consistently here in game three. Point. And, and topic of more penetrating shots, Jack Sock has no issue with that. And easier said than done. Sock's hitting huge serves with heavy topspin, which is not allowing McGuffin to hit Two penetrating zero. returns, which is setting him up for trouble at the kitchen. Too good from McGuffin. Not sure if that was a miss hit or an intentional strategy. That return went short and actually set him up zero for two. just an annihilation right here. My gosh, that backhand roll from Jack Sock is also a weapon. Yeah, McGuffin going for the inside out for and just missed it slightly high. I like the decision making of Jack Sock. We've seen it several times in this matchup, going back to the spots and almost juking out his opponent by doing so multiple Two, times in a row. Oh, too good. Right out. So good there by McGuffin. And you said it, Michelle. I mean, pickleball is a game of patterns. So when you see something that's working, double down on it. Double two, down on two. it. Double down on it. And see if your opponent can handle it. Right out. Two zero. Point. Nice return from McGuffin. Jack Sock putting the pressure on McGuffin to achieve that depth. So what would you like to see on the side of Jack Sock? You talked about more penetrating shots for McGuffin. How about Sock? Well, what's worked for him are big serves and then keeping McGuffin off balance and making him guess three, a little bit. And so more of that as it's continued uh, to get him a lead here early in game three. Oh, my. And that big serve, exactly to your point, setting up a shorter return from McGuffin, who's trying to cut it. 4-0. Side out. How do you approach a big serve when it's coming at you with the velocity and the spin that Sock is able to hit it and Zero, in similar serve by McGuffin? Pure filth from Jack Sock. Inside out. Watch the footwork as he runs around it and is able to loop the ball out of the reach of McGuffin. How do you handle it, Michelle? Yeah. Number one is you, you stand farther back. You're down in the stance. 
He's Four almost zero. at the back wall, McGuffin is. Point. My goodness, inside in, inside out. Jack Sock is putting on a clinic with the forehand. Advancing Nine over in. Donald Five Young, zero. former tennis star. Oh my point. goodness, take another point. Jack Sock, 6 in. nothing. Six game three. Taking full control of this one in Nine game in. three. Six zero. Point. It's unbelievable. That forehand doesn't miss. And the tough part is it's so hard to keep it away from the forehand because of how quick he is and able to get around it as we've talked about. And it's not like they're gaining that much leverage in the court positioning aspect either when he's giving up that much court on the runaround. Point. And a missed return won't do it for McGuffin. 8-0. 8-0. Side out. Zero eight. Point. Big serve to keep McGuffin in it. He's on the board in game three. Hey, don't count him out. We've seen him come back from bigger deficits before, Tyson One McGuffin. Eight. Gets the crowd on their feet. What a moment for the tennis star. With a little dance at the end with that big winding forehand. McGuffin gets the ball, goes down the line. 8-1. Covers so much foot court. Jeez. This guy's unstoppable. 9-1. Nine one. Two bounces. Side <sighs> out. No words. A speechless performance. Doesn't get it. Almost does. Two bounces on the scramble. Even Tyson McGuffin applauding this one. Display showing his athleticism one and nine. that big forehand. And his reads of the game. Point. Thought he had it. The one thing, Michelle, that can't be uh, misstated is he does understand the game. And he didn't just pick up the paddle yesterday and start playing. Though He understands patterns. He understands how the game is currently being played. And he's using that to his advantage. And he's put the work in. He's a step ahead, Jack Sock. Nine two. Two points away. Point. The rocket down the line on side. That was point. a nice return from McGuffin too. Some of them still working nine That's to five point. jobs. Got Moyers in the two. mix on the tour, and Jack Sock with match point. Point game match. Tyson McGuffin fumbles the return. And the second top five win goes to Jack Sock in his career. A three-game thriller over the three-seed Tyson McGuffin. You are breaking ground in the sport of pickleball as one of the former tennis stars that's come over, to, dedicated a lot of time to improving and, and to the sport of pickleball. What's been the biggest learning curve for you? Um, uh... Honestly, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of practice time. You got to get out on the court. You got to like work on your craft. You got to get better at shots. Um, I think it's definitely way more difficult than people think to come over from tennis. I think people.
fact that it doesn't even matter. You can run around any ball, hit a forehand <laughs> from across the court, and still <laughs> giving up that court positioning, you find ways to, to get back a lot of those shots that McGuffin was trying to exploit. How do you explain your court coverage in those situations where they know what's coming ah, their way and you still find a way to get it? You know, it's probably not the smartest. Um, it's probably not going to feel great <laughs> on my hi hips and knees here in a couple of years. You yeah. would have thought after uh, that many years of tennis and running left the whole time and probably exhausting myself way more than I need to, I would have changed things up in this sport. But um, it's just fun. I love getting over there. I love trying to hit kind of crazy shots, crazy forehands. Uh, and it's working. And, and I do. I feel like I can do you know, kind of anything with the ball over there on the left side or you know, even moving right. So, I mean, I'm going to keep doing it until it doesn't work. And then i got to figure something else out.